Hello students, in this video we'll prove that the convergence, the finite convergence, of an infinite continued fraction converge to a real number. If we're given an infinite continued fraction, a0, a1, a2, forever, which of course we know is a0 plus 1 over a1 plus 1 over a2, and so on, we let cn be the convergent, pn over qn, and we know what recursion relationship these says. So I need a few lemma first to get what, get what we want for this. The first thing we're going to observe is, here's a lemma. And our lemma is that these denominators, qn, should be growing like at least n. So I claim that qn is bigger than or equal to n if n is sufficiently large, large enough. So let's check this. Well, clearly q0 is equal to 1. And then q1 is equal to a1, but a1 is at least 1, so q1 is at least 1. And then q2 over here will be a2, q1, plus a uh, q0. So that's at least going to be 2, because a2 is bigger than 1, and q1 is at least 1 over here, and so is q0. So this is at least 2. And so now I can try to prove this by induction, right? So let's suppose that qn is bigger than n, so if qn is bigger than n is valid, is true, then qn plus 1 is an plus 1 qn plus qn minus 1. And so of course this term over here is definitely at least bigger than n by the induction hypothesis. This is bigger than or equal to n. And then the qn plus 1 is definitely at least 1 by also by the induction hypothesis. So this is a 1, so we get an n plus 1, and our statement is proved by uh, induction. So the denominators in these convergence are growing like at least n. The second lemma we need is we need to estimate the difference between two subsequent convergence. So lemma, if we look at cn plus 1 minus cn, well, what's that going to be over here? That's going to be pn plus 1 over qn plus 1, and then minus pn over qn. And so, of course, we'll get pn plus 1 qn, and then minus pn, and then qn plus 1, which we know is going to be negative 1 to the n, over what? Over qn plus 1 qn. Now, the top is either plus or minus 1, so what we can say over here is this is going to be negative 1 to the n over qn plus 1 qn. Okay? And so now I'd like to show the sequence cn is Cauchy, right? And then we'll be done. So I claim this sequence cn is a Cauchy sequence. So proposition, the sequence of convergence cn, n goes from 1 to infinity, or 0 to infinity in this case, 0 to infinity, is a Cauchy sequence. Okay. And so here's the idea. I'm going to estimate this. I'm going to look at, let's suppose, here's the proof. Suppose that n is bigger than m is bigger than or equal to some large number n, right? I'm going to estimate the difference in cn and cm. Then cn and cm is less than or equal to. I'm going to triangle to call this a whole bunch of times. I'm going to plug in a cn minus 1. So I'm going to have a cn minus cn minus 1. That's going to be a minus 1 over here. plus cn minus 1 minus cn minus 2, all the way down to what? All the way down to cm plus 1 minus cm. Okay? That's what we have estimated by. And now, of course, we have estimates for all of these things for the absolute value of cn and cn minus 1. What will that be? I'm going to drop the negative 1 to the ends. This is less than or equal to 1 over qn, qn minus 1, plus 1 over qn minus 1, for the next one's going to be qn minus 1, qn minus 2, plus da 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 all the way down to what? Plus the last one over here is going to be a q what? So I'll have a, um, a qm plus 1, qm, 1 over qm plus 1, qm. So I need to figure out some way of making this larger. I can make this larger by basically using this trivial bound over here. So I'm going to make all the denominators smaller. This is less than or equal to 1 over n times n minus 1, plus 1 over n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way down to what? All the way down to 1 over, and I'm going to have a, um, an m plus 1, m plus 1 times m. But the key thing to observe over here 
is that when we have expressions of this form, this sum is going to um, is going to telescope, right? So I claim that this is a telescopic series over here. So what do we really have? We really have um, what? So we really have the sum over here is really the sum, and then I have terms that look like what? I have terms that look like one over n minus j, and then what? And then I have the terms that look like a, um, and then a j minus one. So n minus j minus one. Terms look like this. So let's partial fraction each of these individual terms over here. So for example, if we look at and the first one over here, this one over n times n minus one, this is equal to one over n minus one over n minus one. And we can easily check that. Um, well, I have the opposite sign over here. So what I'm gonna need to do is put a negative over there and a positive over there. Now it should work. So now this is gonna be n, uh, exactly what we have over here. So that's great, and so I should probably make sure this is of the right sign. So I'm gonna put absolute values around all these things. These are, things are all positive, so what we'll do is any absolute value won't, won't affect things over here, okay? Um, but now what we can do is we can say that all of these things are gonna telescope, so this is gonna be what? This is gonna be a total of what? A negative one over n, a uh, one over n, so let's see over here. Do we have this right, the right sign over here? This is going to be a, um, let's make sure this is correct. So will this work over here? This is going to be a neg n minus 1, um, the negative, and then a minus n over this thing. So that will work out fine. And so now what we have is we can see the telescopic nature of this. And so what we're going to have is this is going to be a negative 1 over n plus 1 over n minus 1, and then a plus, um, a plus what? a plus 1 over n minus 2 minus 1 over n minus 1, etc., all the way down to what? The last one over here is going to give me a what? It's going to give me a 1 over m, and then a minus 1 over m plus 1. And so what's going to happen is all these terms are going to cancel out, except for the first and the last, so I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have a negative 1 over n, and a plus 1 over m. So this whole expression over here is less than 1 over m. And so I know I can make 1 over m less than epsilon if I choose m sufficiently, if I choose n capital sufficiently large. So if n is sufficiently large, one over m is less than epsilon if n bigger than m bigger than or equal to n. And this shows that my sequence of convergence is a Cauchy sequence. And now I know that my sequence of convergence have to converge to a real number. So hence, Cn converges to a number C, and my infinite continued fraction converges. Thank you very much.